Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, I am back out at Heroes Park today uh, with the little uh, Femi X8 Mini. Now, if you've been following my channel, you know I've had a ton of tr troubles with this little guy. Problems with the gimbal, problems with connection, particularly here at Heroes Park. Just doesn't seem to be able to maintain a good FPV connection and sometimes it even affects the control connection. So uh, I am nothing else if not tenacious. So we are going to try some more things today. So what I did right off the bat was I rebound the controller to the drone. This was suggested by uh, a couple of the commenters uh, on my previous videos. So uh, it's just a matter of holding the button down on this till it starts beeping and the lights go out on the back and then it reconnects itself. So we're going to try that first uh, and see if just reconnecting the controller helps us with FPV connection. Secondly, because I have another RC, a second controller, from the original Femi X8 Mini I had, the one that I dropped and broke the arm on, I've got that controller. Uh, if this doesn't help, we're going to bind that controller to this drone and try that. And then thirdly, I remembered to bring the uh, USB-C to USB-C uh, OTG cable with me. And we will also try my Google Pixel 3 and see if that makes any difference in the connection we have to the drone. But first, we're going to start with the, uh, with the iPhone connected to the controller uh, that we have rebound to the drone. So let's quit messing around and let's get this bird in the air. Okay, we've got the drone fired up. Let me, uh, I'm going to go into the uh, menu now and we'll see uh, what kind of shape we're in. Uh, it's still firing up, still looking for satellites, so we'll give that a second. Return to home is set at 50 meters. It's not asking for any uh, calibrations, so we should be go. We are going to record at uh, 4K 30 frames per second. So let's start recording now. By the way, I am using the Pro battery. I don't know if that will make any difference, uh, but just wanted to let you know what we're doing. So starting recording now. And uh, let's go ahead and take off. We're going to do that on the app. And we'll let the drone go to its uh, takeoff height here. I'm gonna, that's me dropping the gimbal down. So I think we're good here. The drone is at its uh, takeoff height. We're going to drop it down here a little bit and uh, get a good look at us. Drone is moving around just a little. Not too bad. Okay. Uh, I'm going to drop the gimbal down so we get our good, uh, our good droney here. And we got a couple of dogs out here chasing sprinklers, but uh, we're going to do our droney. Uh, so uh, reverse and up now, reverse and up. And I'm already seeing blockiness on uh, FPV, or uh, that is to say, uh, choppiness on the uh, on the FPV feed. I'm going to, and we're already seeing on the. Uh, uh, FPV uh, meter on the app. It was in the orange there. So let's turn it around here. Yeah, and it's just so blocky. Yeah, there and I lost connection. We're roughly 200 meters away, lost connection. So we can say, yeah, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not wanting to stay connected. So we're going to go forward here. Yeah, we're getting that compass interfered warning that we often get with this drone. And as you can see, uh, basically, it's unflyable as it is. Uh, you know, our connection just isn't what it needs to be. 
Yeah, and I'm trying to yaw it around. Uh, you know, no point in flying a, uh, there's no point in flying a pattern here. I'm just gonna do a return to home. And we will try connecting uh, the other controller. So yeah, this just doesn't work. It's, it's unflyable like this because you simply cannot see where you're going. So put it into return to home here and uh, we'll see if we can get uh, a, maybe a little bit of a, uh, uh, a precision landing. We'll try at least. And again, I'm watching it come back and watching that signal meter go in and out and I'm pointed directly at the drone with the controller. And you know, kind of blotchy uh, stuttering on FPV. Unfortunately, that's what I'm used to with this drone. I mean, look at that. And I've got the antennas pointed right up at the drone and we're still uh, seeing a little bit of that, so. Yeah, it'll take it a while to detect the, the landing pad here. And we're gonna, uh, we're gonna give it a chance here to find the pad. I don't mind it landing in the grass. Uh, if it gets too close to the picnic shelter here, though, we'll we'll do something about that. It's gonna it's a significant miss of the pad here, but we'll see. Maybe it'll find it. And you can see even coming down here, and I have the antennas pointed right at the drone, and it's just not. Yeah, and it's still it's saying not detected. And we're gonna let it, uh, looks like it's gonna land in the grass there. So, let me turn the camera around so you can see where it landed here. Uh, yeah, so anyway, not bad, it was in the grass. So we'll pick it up, we'll, uh, We'll swap out the uh, controller and we'll see uh, see what we can do. Okay, so I switched controllers and interestingly enough, it's asking me for a firmware update. So I'm gonna ignore that. I'm gonna go into our menu, look at uh, the firmware version. Yeah, and it's the RC relay because I haven't used this RC in a while. It wants to update it. So we're gonna click update. That should take just a second. And we're starting the update. So the update is completed, but it, uh, yeah, it shut off the controller. So we're going to, oh no, it looks like it restarted here. So it should connect back up. And we'll see what it updated the uh, relay to. It should be the same. Uh, as the other RC. It's just that I hadn't used this controller in quite a while, so clearly it needed that update. Okay, so I, I just to be on the safe side, I powered off and powered the drone back on. Same thing with the controller here. That way we make sure that uh, everything, you, you cycle the power on it and make sure that everything's loaded correctly. And uh, that's it updated us to RC Relay 3003A. So uh, let's see, let me double check and make sure, I wanna make sure that our screen recording is still on and it is. And uh, just for the fun of it, I am going to, uh, I'm gonna do a uh, compass calibration here just to make sure that everything is as it should be. You saw that on that other flight, we got a, a, a magnetic warning, so we'll calibrate the compass. Okay, you saw there, we got a calibration success. And like I said, that was just to, uh, just to make sure that everything's running as it should. So we'll wait for it to uh, find satellites or whatever it needs to do here. System is preparing, it says. We've got control of the gimbal. Uh, yeah, okay. System is preparing still, although it says ready to go GPS. We'll uh, we'll hang out for a few minutes and wait for that warning to go away. Sensor temperature is too high because it's been sitting there. 
Uh, so uh, we'll cycle the drone off and on again. Okay, we'll try this one more time and uh, see if we can take off uh, quickly here. If not, we'll just shut everything down. We'll put it in the shade and let it cool off. Sensor temperature is too high. I'm going to go ahead and try and take off anyway and see if we can get it in the air and get it cooled down. So I'm going to hit uh, record. Oh, no, it won't, it won't let me. Yeah, so... <laughs> Looks like I need to shut everything down. We'll put it in the shade for a few minutes and cool it off and we'll try again. Okay, let's get this guy in the air before it uh, overheats on us. And let me drop that uh, gimbal down a little bit. And again, I even just pulling that gimbal down, I. I see some uh, little bit of uh, choppiness on the FPV. So I'm yawing the drone around. We'll bring it down and we'll do another droney here. Okay, so I'm going to drop the gimbal down just a tad and uh, reverse it up now. Reverse and up. And, you know, so far so good. You know, I will say, I think there's an improvement there. Uh, although as soon as I say that, yeah, now it's, it's choppy. As I'm yawing around here, you can see it's choppy. Yeah, and we lost connection. Uh, yeah, gosh, I don't even know what to say. So that's with uh, that's with a different controller. So we we can compass interfered again, and we just did a compass calibration. So I don't know what to say here, folks. I'm picking up that gimbal here, and I'm going full stick forward. Uh, and I'm seeing on the uh, uh, FPV meter that it's turning orange just like the other one, and. Then we're losing connection again. So, uh, by the way, this is also with a different uh, OTG cable. This is the OTG cable from that other drone. There we've lost connection completely. And, you know, we've got really, really choppy here. Yep. So whatever's going on with this drone... <laughs> I think I can safely say it has nothing to do with the controller. Yeah, and there again, uh, boy, is it blocky. So while we're, ooh, geez, I over yawed there because I couldn't see what I was doing, mostly. Uh, okay, let's back it up just a little. And then I am going to uh, pick up the gimbal. And let's look at our gimbal uh, percentage there. We're at minus 9.4 to get that kind of that rule of thirds. So I'm gonna go full stick forward right now. And yeah, boy, do we have a bunch of choppiness on that FPV. But it held, it's, it's holding that, uh, it's holding the gimbal in place nice, so that was full stick forward. I didn't look at our uh, meters per second, but at least according to the gauge, we're still at minus 9.4, so I'm yawing around here or trying to. But, uh, you know, it's, it's so blocky, I, I, you know, I'm getting so much uh, choppiness that it's hard to see. Okay, so we're still at minus 9.4. And we're going to go, this is in normal mode, by the way. We're going to go full stick forward the other way. And we'll see if we get any of that gimbal drop. The gauge still says minus 9.4. And, uh, you know, we're at about almost 10 meters per second. We're going to stop right now. Yeah, so I'm, you know, the gimbal seems okay. But, you know, there again, we, 
we lost control and you can see the meter there i mean we're completely out right now okay i'm gonna hit uh, i'm gonna hit return to home Uh, and the drone will come back. Uh, at least we have a good control connection, but what I'm gonna tell you is if, if you cannot see what you're doing on FPV with the drone, it's just, well, I, what is the point? Because you can't see where you're pointing the camera, etc. cetera. So uh, very, very frustrating. So let's try for, we'll try for another uh, precision landing here as best we can. And you know, I'm pointing the antenna, the flat part of the antenna right up at the drone here. And uh, you can see we're still, it's still going in and out. So of course landing pad not detected. As long as it, comes down in the grass I won't uh, I won't mess with it but uh, yeah it looks like we're gonna be safely safely in the grass here so we'll just let it land turn the camera around here so you guys can see and well now it's saying it sees the landing pad you know who knows we might get it it's gonna be real close here Drop that camera down so you guys can see. Yeah, I think it's gonna hit the pad. Look at this. Well, here's a success. We needed a success with this guy. Yeah, it's on the H, so I'll take it. And it uh, it it stopped recording, so so that's good. Okay, so that didn't work. I got one more trick up my sleeve. I'm gonna pull out my uh, Google Pixel 3 and we're gonna hook that up and we're gonna see if that makes any difference. Okay, for some reason, in the uh, when I fired it up, fired up the, the uh, Femi uh, Navi app, we, uh, we got a, a download uh, for a firmware download, but we know we've already done that to, to the drone. So let's enter device and it says, yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's not asking us for an update, and uh, I don't see, yeah, there's, there's, it's not asking for any kind of calibrations or anything, so we'll go ahead and take off here. I'm going to start recording, and uh, let's go ahead and hit take off on the app. Okay, that was me uh, dropping the gimbal. Yeah, we'll give it a second to uh, look at its landing area. Let's turn it around again. Bring it down. Dropping that gimbal some more. Uh, you know it's looking pretty good so far. Let's uh, let's do our uh, our usual droney here, reversing up now, reverse and up. Yeah, and I'm already seeing a uh, little bit of modeling there on the screen. Yeah, it's jumping around a little bit, uh, although. I'm going to say better than what we saw uh, with the, uh, yeah, it's hard for me to tell. Yeah, and I'm trying to yaw right now. Yeah, and boy, it's definitely, it's definitely stuttering. Really, uh, really difficult. And, and this screen is not as bright on this uh, phone, so it makes it, yeah, compass interfered again, uh, same warning that we got before. Uh, and we're getting uh, we're we're getting a control signal uh, in the orange now too. And look at that, look at that FPV. Yeah, I don't know what to say.
Yeah, so we had we were in the orange with both signals at uh, less than 200 meters away. Yeah, I guess if anything, this isn't working even as good as the iPhone did. So uh, what we know is it's not uh, it's not the phone. Look at that! Holy cow! Okay, I am going to uh, turn towards the other end of the park here. I'm going to slide us uh, sideways to the drone's left a little bit and back us up. Whoop! Dropping an altitude there. I meant to back us up. So, backing us up, and then, uh, and boy, you know, I'm already seeing again, it, it's a little different on this uh, Google phone, uh, but definitely FPV issues. Uh, it's definitely choppy and and then what we're seeing with this phone also is a difference in the uh, uh, in the control signal so let's go full stick forward now minus 10.2 it says on the uh, on the angle of the gimbal and I am going to let off right now and that stayed the same so that's good Let's yaw around again. And again, I'm pointing it, I'm pointing, I've got the controller pointed directly at the drone. So uh, we are going to go full stick forward this way. And again, uh, boy, it's difficult. It's difficult to see. But our gimbal angle stayed the same. Low battery, it wants to land, so let's bring it home. We'll see if we get, uh, we'll see if we get a precision landing here. There again, you know, I, uh, what's different about this is I'm even watching the uh, the iPhone worked a little better because we always had a solid signal on the control. And again, I don't know if you, yeah, look at this FPV screen and I'm trying to drop the gimbal down so we can see. And I point, I got the antenna pointed directly up at the drone. Oh, this is hilarious. Don't even know what to say here, uh, man. If anything, this is worse. Let's uh, let's hope for a precision landing here. Maybe. It's not, you don't get the dialog box on this one that tells you whether it did or did not find uh, the, uh, the pad, but it looks pretty close here. I think we got it. We're gonna be darn close at least. Yeah, look at that, right on the H. So that's, uh, that's one thing that this drone, uh, it gets those precision landings done uh, quite well. And I'm kicking the gimbal up. There we go. Uh, that's one thing I wish Femi would do would, uh, would be to have it as the drone comes down, kick that gimbal back up, but, uh, but they don't. It's not that big a deal, but it's something you should remember to do. And if you're landing on a pad, it's okay. But if you were in rocks or something, you wouldn't want the camera to land. So, uh, so let me shut everything down here. Hey, okay, just for the fun of it, after the test we did at Heroes Park, I moved to another location. This is the uh, charter school that's next door to my subdivision. I've had successful flights here. So let's see if the FPV dropouts and issues are location related uh, with Heroes Park there with Wi-Fi interference or whatever it might be. Uh, so it's getting really hot. Let's uh, quit messing around. Let's get this bird in the air.
Okay, it looks like we're ready to take off. We've got some lawnmowers running around here, so there's going to be a little background noise, but uh, let's start recording now, and I'll hit take off on the app. And again, the drone will uh, go up to about four and a half, five meters in the air. I think the manual says four meters, but it always goes a little higher than that. Uh, good steady uh, takeoff here. Let's bring it down. Yacht around, and uh, and we'll do our uh, we'll do our little droney here. Bring it in. Okay, let me drop that gimbal down and uh, reverse and up now. Reverse and up. That's me dropping the gimbal. And yeah, I already see on our uh, FPV gauge. Yeah, blockiness, both issues with signal. Yeah, and, and it cut out. And yeah, you're going to see a cell phone tower there. Yes, we we do have a cell phone tower here. Uh, well, so what I'm going to say is, it's pretty clear that whatever my problems are, uh, they aren't just, yeah, look at that, look at that cut out there. They're not just related to that location over at, uh, yeah, so it, it looks like it, Put itself into return to home we're going to stop that maybe operation failed okay we're going to stop that okay we stopped return to home uh, let's pick up the gimbal so we lost both there we lost both control and uh we lost uh fpv So yeah, you can see our, our meter is in the uh, orange, although yeah, now we're getting a little blockiness and we lost it all together. And it came back. I'm gonna try and turn the drone around. Nah, that put it into return to home. So even worse, uh, this is kind of similar to what we saw in Montana where it just loses everything. So I'll keep the, yeah, there it came back and it's in, it's in fail safe return. So this is even worse than what we saw. Well, <laughs> I tried to stop it and I'm holding the controller up. Okay, there I stopped return to home. Let's do one more thing. Let's head out over uh, Discovery School here. So full stick forward, and we can we can look we can watch our gimbal and see how we do. And it's a little bit better in this direction. Although I see our meter is uh, is in the orange, but uh, you know what I see on the screen actually looked pretty good. So yeah, it looks like the lawnmowers are right here uh, where I'm standing so yeah and it put itself into fail safe return so enough is enough let's let it land I think uh, I think we've proved our point let's see if I can drop the gimbal out and, and again you know you can see we're orange there on the meter and I have the uh, the antenna pointed directly at the drone, the flat part of the antenna. Okay, let's point that camera straight down and let's see if it can find the landing pad here. And it might. La landing pad detected, it says. So, landing pad detected. But it's a ways off, but it'll be on the concrete here, so it'll be okay. It's zeroing in. That's one thing that this guy does pretty darn good. It seems to get, uh, seems to do pretty good with precision landing.
Yeah, I think it's going to hit right on the H here. I'm going to pick that camera up as we go. I'm trying to, anyway. And you can see it's right on the uh, right on the H there. So that was successful, and it uh, it turned off uh, recording. Okay, we've proven another point there. Let me shut everything down, and we'll do our conclusion. Hey, okay, the Femi X8 Mini, uh, big fail. <laughs> I don't know what else we can do to try and maintain a good RC connection. Uh, as you can see, it seemed like it got worse as we went on. I started out out there at Heroes Park uh, with the original RC. I reconnected it, rebound the RC to the drone in case that was somehow an issue. Still had problems with FPV, although I'll say we had a decent control signal, but we still had problems with, uh, with FPV. Then uh, I switched it to my other controller that I have, my other... Uh, Femi X8 Mini controller from the other Mini drone that I have, and it really uh, was no better. Uh, if anything, it might have even been a little bit worse. Uh, and by the way, that was with different OTG cables on both, so we can rule out it being a cable issue. Then we uh, got my uh, Google Pixel 3 out to see if the Android phone would fare any better, and. It was worse. Uh, it uh, we had not only losing uh, FPV connection, we were losing control connection, etc. And then here, so I thought, well, okay, is it location? So came over here to uh, the uh, charter school park that's close to my house, right next to my subdivision. Uh, and thought we would try it there. And yes, I know there's a big cell phone tower here, but what I'm gonna tell you is I fly a lot of drones here and that cell phone tower doesn't seem to bother them. So whether that's an issue or not, it definitely bothered this guy because we just had a number of issues. We couldn't get out very far at all. Losing FPV, losing control signal, forcing the drone into return to home. It was probably worse out of all of them. So uh, yeah, I mean, I just don't even know what to say. Uh, it's honestly, uh, you know, no matter what you're gonna say about the gimbal, and there's issues with the gimbal, although we didn't didn't look too bad today. Uh, if you can't control the drone, if you can't see FPV, what's the point? Uh, so, I, you know, I'm I'm done with this little guy. I, you know, if, if a firmware update comes or something, I'll I'll try it out. Uh, if uh, po potentially, it, if I took it out to some place where there's absolutely no Wi-Fi interference like the Snake River Canyon or something, would it fly okay and would I get some range? Possibly, I think it uh, could, could very well be. I know other people in more remote locations are having some success, although I also know plenty of people that have had the same issues that I did, uh, Ron Brown, etc., a few others. So, uh, yeah, I just, you know, I, I just am not recommending this drone to anybody right now because it really just isn't, uh, it's just not ready for prime time. Again, if they come out with a firmware update, if there's something more that I can report on, uh, I will do so in the future, uh, you know, and if I'm making another a trip out with another drone out to the Snake River Canyon or out to Lucky Peak Reservoir or something, I might tag this guy along just to try it out. But uh, anyway, man, I'm sorry, Femi. It's tough. You just, you got to do better. Uh, you, you shouldn't have released this drone uh, before it was ready to go. So that's about it. Uh, this is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And uh, if you like this kind of content, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. Most of all, honestly, I really appreciate you taking the time to look at this video. Uh, the Femi X8 Mini, uh, not ready for prime time. I'm going to just tell you, stick with your DJI Mini for now. And, uh, you know, hopefully they'll improve it. If, if they do, we'll, we'll try it again. But uh, I'm kind of at the end of all the tricks I know how to do. So, okay, uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.